Sequences and in Infinite Series, an overview, part two. A sequence, a sub n, is a function. For each positive integer n, the function a sub n maps the integer n to a real number. So a sequence is just a function where the domain of the function is just uh, positive integers. For example, with this sequence, the integer 5 is mapped to the real number 500 over 126. The skills you used in studying functions can be used to study sequences. Uh, for example, uh, in functions, we uh, analyzed limits. What's the limit of a function? Well, we're going to do the same thing here. What's the limit of this sequence as n gets larger and larger? Now, this is called, um, this type of limit is called a limit at infinity. And I have, uh, in, my, in our study of functions, I have videos uh, called uh, limits at infinity. So if you want to review limits at infinity, uh, you, can, you can do that. Just look at my videos and uh, look for limits at infinity in the title. All right, well, let's just continue. We, we want to find this limit at infinity, what happens as n gets larger and larger and larger. Um, as we did with functions, we will look at the degree of the denominator. The degree of the denominator is 3. So what we do is we divide the numerator and the denominator by n to the 3 power, because 3 is the degree of the denominator. After we do that division, we're ready to take the limit. And we just use the fact that 1 over n to the 3 is getting closer and closer to 0 as n gets larger and larger. Now, that's, that's a fairly intuitive uh, notion. 1 over uh, a number getting really, really big, uh, 1 over that I is getting really, really small. Okay. So uh, the limit of the sequence we're looking at is 4 over 1 plus 0. N and that's just the limiting behavior. And so the limit is, uh, once we simplify, we get 4. So the sequence values approach 4 as n increases. So we say that the limit as n goes to infinity, the limit of a sub n is equal to the value 4. So 4 is the limiting behavior. Let's do another one. Uh, this limit does not exist. Now, why is that? Well, uh, let's just try putting in some numbers. If n equals 1, we get negative 1. For n equals 2, we get positive 1. For n equals 3, we get negative 1. At n equals 4, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1. And so the numbers just uh, jump back and forth between negative 1 and positive 1. This jumping back and forth is called oscillation. And this sequence diverges by oscillation. It does not settle on uh, one value or the other. It just jumps back and forth between positive 1 and negative 1. And so we say that the limit, as n goes to infinity, of a sub n, we say that that limit does not exist. Another thing we learned in functions is how to use the squeeze theorem. And we're going to use the squeeze theorem to find the limit of this sequence. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to note that the numerator, negative 1 to the n, the numerator is uh, always between negative 1 and 1. In fact, it's either equal to negative 1 or positive 1. But since we're using the squeeze theorem, we're going to write it as an inequality. All right, so neg negative 1 to the n is equal to either, uh, it's between negative 1 and positive 1. Then look at the denominator of the quotient. We're going to divide the inequality by that denominator, n squared plus 1. And when we do that, it looks like this. 
All right, so we now have squeezed our sequence between two sequences, a sequence that is always on the left and a sequence that is always on the right. Then what we do is we say the sequence on the left, as n gets bigger and bigger and big bigger, the sequence on the left is going to zero. And the sequence on the right, as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the sequence on the right is going to zero. Now, as n gets larger and larger and larger, the sequence on the left is going to zero, the sequence on the right is going to zero, and so the guy in the middle has to be going to zero, and that's called the squeeze theorem. If I graph this, it's fairly easy to see what is going on. All right, now the uh, magnitudes of the terms are decreasing. That's the whole reason why this um, uh, converges. It, the sequence converges to zero as n gets larger and larger. So the sequence is converging because the magnitude of the terms are decreasing to zero. And so even though this, the sequence oscillates, it doesn't matter that it oscillates because the magnitude is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, going to zero. All right, uh, let's look at this uh, sequence. And now this sequence is given by a recurrence formula. Find the limit or state th that it does not exist. Well, again, I think what I'll do is I'll just look at the first uh, few terms. The first term is one. How do I find a sub 2? Well, let's say it looks like uh, a sub 2 would be negative 2 times a sub 1. All right, so a sub 2 equals negative 2 times a sub 1. And so a sub 2 equals negative 2. Can you find a sub 3? That's right. You take a sub 2, multiply it by negative 2, and you get positive 4. Can you find a sub 4? a sub 4 is a sub 3 times negative 2, so I get negative 8. So let's look at the terms. I've got 1, and then negative 2, and then positive 4, and then negative 8, and what's the next one going to be? Po uh, uh, whoops, I made a mistake. That should be a positive 16. Let's, let's see if we can fix that. Okay, I think I fixed it. A sub 5 is equal to positive 16. A sub 6 would then be negative 32. And A sub 7 would be positive 64. So what's happening here? I'm going uh, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And what's happening to the magnitudes? The magnitudes are getting larger and larger and larger. So the uh, terms are unbounded. And since the terms are unbounded, the sequence diverges. Also note that the sequence oscillates. All right, we'll, uh, uh, in uh, part three, we're going to switch from sequences to infinite series. So I'll see you then uh, in part three. Take care and have a great day.